Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's your girls and welcome laga laga and I'm back with another video. I realized that today we're not doing a video that I normally do. I'm not a storyteller, I'm not a story time teller, I've never done this. Um and it's it's not a thing that I do, um uh, and it's not gonna be a thing that I do. I just felt like um let me just come forward and also tell my story um with regards to Utabo Besta. Um yeah with regards to him so i met otabo pesta last year in october i feel like on the day that i met him my guardian angels were like definitely with me that day because guys um when i realized that this man has done so many things i was like oh my god i could have easily been one of those ladies that were art and those ladies that were emmed I don't want to say the words because I know that YouTube has a problem with those words. So I could have easily been those ladies that have been R'd and the lady that had been M'd. So my condolences to the family, man. Like, I think, yo, that's such a horrible thing. And to think that I spent like roughly three to four hours with this person like isolated like isolated with this person and i feel like if he wanted to do that he could have done it but honestly my guardian angels were with me that day and i appreciate that so much i see like this thing like at first i was like this is so funny but like i realized that it's actually not i could have lost my life that day and something could have happened to me so yo guys i i don't even know how to feel anyway please don't forget to like comment and also subscribe on my channel so make sure that you subscribe uh yeah let's get into the story you guys i'll take you like back 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 as like where the story started i'm not gonna start like doom to the conversation that we had you guys know that as content creators influencers we get invited um to hotels like we get invited to hotels apartments um for brands like for collaboration with clothing whatever it is whatever event that there is we get invited into those spaces so mostly on instagram i work with um clothing brands hair brands um apartments people that have apartments and i also work with hotels as well like restaurants like if there's an event you like you'd get invited to those events and if people want to collaborate with you that's what happens if you're hearing a fan it's just my fan is so hot here so that's why i switch it on so anyway i'm saying um yeah so we get to work with a lot of brands and um iodam Orem, Uganya Um, whatever that you guys want to call it for the um purpose of this video, I'm gonna call it Orem. Ne Abanyabandude. Other people call it Ora Yo Um. So I'm gonna call it Orem because that's just like how I feel comfortable calling it. So I Orem had been in communication with me uh I think since September. It's just that now they have deactivated the Instagram account, ne? that they had on um, Instagram so I can't retrieve the conversation that happened between me and them so yeah I think I think it was around about August September there about I'm not quite sure like when they started being in communication with me and I was quite comfortable with them you guys because as I told you I work with hotels I work with restaurants clothing brands whatever brand that contacts me and wants to collaborate I'm open to that so um when they started following me for me it wasn't like a red flag because i follow so many brands so many brands follow me so it wasn't like something weird for me they started being in communication with me and i also spoke with them um like with regards to like their apartments and also their work well not apartments they have a lot of like private properties and there were so many influences as well that were following um the account and that had been working with the account i'm sure probably the influencers that were working with them i see like no one has come up like to talk about this thing and i think it's because hey eh, maybe people just don't want to come out or they don't want to be involved i'm not quite sure i really don't know but i know that that brand Oram Katabo, the brand that co contacted me it had been working with other influencers so 
I don't see any red flag. I've got to say, you guys, like, my heart goes out to the families that lost their daughters, the ladies that were odd. Like, honestly, that person could have easily been me. With my story, I don't want you guys to think that um, I'm sort of like Zotinina. I'm sort of like diluting the situation of what all Tabo Besta did. Ne? I empathize with um, the ladies that went through what they what they went through with regards to Tabo Besta, and I stand with the people that believe that um, Tabo Besta should be punished. That's what I also believe, but. Um, in the same light, I won't, like, I'll talk about my experience with Otabo Besta. Yeah, at the time I knew him as TK. I don't know about Otabo Besta, I knew nothing. And another thing is that, um, when Otabo Besta, um, started all of these things, like, in 2000, I, I see, but he started around, like, 2005, 2006, 7, 8, 9. Then I was in primary school, so I wouldn't have known about him. Also, when he was, the first time that he got... Yeah, the first time he went to jail, it was around about 2011, 2012, I was in high school. So, like, honestly, I wouldn't have known about him. And I asked many of my, like, my age mates, but did you guys know about this guy? And everyone is just like, no, we didn't know about him. We're only also finding out about him now. So, I had mentioned to you guys that, um, yeah... I met the, I think I started talking to the account on Instagram around about August, but honestly, I think it was September. I think it was September. Yeah, some of them, I'm not quite sure. So, yeah, they were talking about their properties, what they do, what they're about, and they'd like to collaborate with me. And I was also interested, but I couldn't work with them at the time because um, you guys would know from my previous vlog um, that I did that at the time, um, during September and October, I was experiencing morning sickness and my morning sickness wasn't like a morning sickness that was like like light morning sickness it was really like a morning sickness from hell so I couldn't do anything couldn't work I couldn't like anything I couldn't do anything I couldn't meet up with anyone I was always in bed and yeah that's what I did for like three to four months if you are day one of mine you would have realized that around that time September October I would have been posting a lot of wig reviews and that's because I couldn't like sit on camera like talk on camera I would be doing like for even for my reviews I'd be doing like voiceovers no vlogs nothing like that no fashion content nothing like that I remember I was invited to quite a few things here in Cape Town I lost out on a few um, gigs as well because I couldn't attend any of those because of me being sick so anyway um, coming back to the Orem story they we were in communication so finally they said to me okay cool um can we have your personal number phone number so that we can talk like much easier uh on whatsapp so i was like okay cool i do this with any other hotel that i am in collaboration with or any other brand that i am in collaboration with so i'm not seeing anything funny about this fine i give them my number um yeah i give them my number so we start being in communication at this stage let me just take my phone and i'll read from my phone um and then i'll also put the screenshots over here so that you guys can see for yourselves i am going to blur out the the phone number that um was sent to me which was described as utabo's besta's number but at the time they said the person that i was speaking to said utabo besta was tk so, and TK is the owner of Orem. At the time, I thought TK is, yeah, I thought TK was a white person because which black person, well, I'm not saying that it's not a thing, but like, I've never heard of, like a big brand such as Orem, I've never heard of a black person owning like so many properties. Um, so yeah, I thought, or even an Indian person, so I thought, Orlando or TK was a white person and also the person that I was speaking to or the person that was portrayed to me on whatsapp was a white lady I'll also ins insert her picture over here so that you guys can see the picture that they were using the lady's name um, they said it was Holly so around this time I thought I was communicating with Orlando or Holly and yeah yeah, I thought I was communicating with Holly and obviously the profile picture that was there was a white person. So obviously I thought it was a white lady that I was talking to 
and usually when I talk to real estate people, Kanye, hotel people, like it's usually a white lady. So to me, it did not scream any like red flag or anything like that. So around about the 20th of October, I think that's when I started feeling better from my morning sickness um, because this is when the conversation between me and Holly starts. Um, you'll even see the dates and everything like the stamps, it's fine, the timestamps and everything. So Holly greets me, um, good day, I hope you're well. And I respond, hi, I'm well, thanks, and you? Um, Holly says, it's Holly from Orem. Um, and I say, nice to meet you, Holly. Um, she says, um, nice to meet you too. Um, remember, I am thinking it's a she, okay? Um, and she um, says to me, are you interested in the marketing campaign and TV show? And I'm like, I am, but what's my role? And she says, um, the show is about presenting lifestyle and living the lifestyle on Netflix, new program, my CEO. My CEO is currently in Cape Town doing casting. Do you want me to try and see if um, I can set up a meeting? I respond and I said, um, yeah, sure. Sounds good. Um, she responds and says, so basically um, the show is about private property, luxury lifestyle and it's what and it has quite a few sponsors you will travel the world and view some of these properties um present what present them and think and i think i'll see you what and i think i'll see you will explain the rest okay i think they were trying to say and i'll explain the rest when we meet um and they say are you available today or tomorrow are you available today and tomorrow and I say, I'm not available today and tomorrow, how's Monday? The reason for that, I was still not feeling like 100%, like fine, fine, fine from my morning sickness. So I was like, my hair is a mess. I still need to do my hair and my nails. So like I needed to look like presentable. I couldn't go to like meet someone and I'm looking like a horror movie. So I say, I'm not available today and tomorrow, how's Monday? and she says oh no the casting is ending on sunday and i say oh can we? and i say can we do um sunday then sorry i didn't think um it would also take place during the weekend so she says it's basically a casting but let me see maybe we are fully booked to all confirm what you are right now i think with you right now we like we're fully booked and i say okay so the last conversation we had was on the 20th of October um, so they said they were leaving this person was leaving I'm sure you yeah they said they were leaving the Monday the Monday let's double check on my phone when was the Monday after 20th October 20th was on Thursday uh, when I started communicating with them on whatsapp the 24th falls on a Monday, right? So they said the CEO is leaving on Monday. I contacted them on Tuesday, which is the 25th of October. And I say, hi, Holly. Um, hope you're good. Um, just a proposal. Since Orem has properties in Cape Town, I was wondering if we can do a partnership um, where I advertise a property on my Instagram account. Please let me know if you're interested. Holly says, um, good day, I hope you're well. I'm sure you can arrange something. Could I kindly give you the contact details of our CEO and you can just pop in a message um, on WhatsApp. I already briefed him on your interest and you guys can um, take it from there. And I say, thank you. Please share the contact of the CEO. Uh, so she gives me the contact of the CEO I see there are a couple of missed calls from Holly trying to call me <clears throat> and she says hi miss and I say hi Holly um, and she says I just wanted you to um, contact him before he leaves for France yeah well they're making it seem like this person is leaving um, for France and I say oh thanks Holly I'm meeting him this evening and Holly says great he told me so this is where the real tea starts a couple of minutes later after Holly contacted me um, obviously you you guys saw where I say uh, where I said I'm meeting him this evening Holly says great he told me 
so which means I had already spoken to TK over the phone. Now I speak with U UTK over the phone, which is the the owner of Urim. I speak to him on the phone. When I speak to him on the phone, this person sounds colored. Remember, I thought that this person is a white person. I was under that impression. So I'm thinking, Ibo, why does this person sound like a colored person? Anyway, I don't pay attention to it. Um, uh, TK says, okay, let's meet up at a, at a hotel. And I tell him, no, I'm not comfortable with meeting with you at a hotel. Let's rather meet up in a public space. So he suggests, okay, cool, let's do, and that's about, is it La Parada Oganye Paranga in Cam's Bay? We were talking over the phone, so that's why I don't have um, conversations with UTK. I wonder if I still have a um, record of phone calls. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Okay, I think he was calling me like on a call call. So I was talking with Ulando U UTK on a call then. Um, so he says, let's meet up at a hotel. I tell him that I'm not comfortable with meeting him in a hotel. Let's rather meet up in a public area. So he says, okay, cool. Let's meet up in, um, La Parada. La Parada, okay, La Paranga. I'm not quite sure. The one in Cam's Bay. I'm not sure if it's Paranga or Parada, uh, whatever. So, um, we agree on that and I'm like, okay, cool. I think we agreed on meeting up at like six o'clock, something like that. Half past five, six o'clock. I'm not quite sure. I think it would have been like, yeah, six o'clock maybe. So I'm like, okay, cool. We can do that. I'm fine with that. Fine. Um, I go, yeah, I go back home because I was at the nail bar. Remember I told you about, I was quite a mess. So I did my hair, did my nails. Um, so I was like, okay, cool. Now I'm ready. I can go. And because I was so sick, I was like, okay, cool. Let me rather not drive. Um, let me just take an Uber to Cam's Bay uh, yeah so I, I take an uber but if you guys know like Cape Town um, around about six o'clock and you're using the high level to Cam's Bay you know that that place is usually like super packed so I was like I am not driving I know like the traffic that's there and also I'm not fine I don't think I can stand this like so I'm trying to take everything slow Fine. I call him because I was running a bit late. I call him and I'm like, oh, hi, TK. Um, actually, I'm running a bit late because there are there is traffic here, like, on the high level. So I'm running a bit late. And he's like, okay, cool, that's fine. I'm also still, like, at my hotel here in Cam's Bay. Um, I'll make my way shortly. At least I'm not at the restaurant. I'm not just, he's like, he's not, like, just sitting around in the restaurant waiting for me. So I'm like, oh, cool, that's perfect then, which means we were both running late in essence and you guys now i start talking to the my uber driver and i'm telling him that i'm going to a meeting dun, 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 dun. and my uber driver and i tell him that hey man there was something strange about the person the owner that i was talking to um yeah he lives in europe and i thought that i told like i tell him the entire story um with regards to how i met these people and all of those things man like i start discussing and i told and i tell him that i thought that the person that i was meeting was a white person but when i started speaking to them on the phone um it was suddenly a colored person sounded colored and he's like and i'm like for me it's strange because i didn't think um a black person yeah but, um, I guys for me does not make sense like he I'm not saying that black people are not that successful Sha. they are but like I've never heard of one mm. honestly I honestly I guys also I was under the impression that they own the entire of Oram because in my mind I'm meeting with the CEO and also that it's kind of strange about why am I meeting with the CEO why am I not meeting with the um, like an assistant or something like that. So I was like, okay, cool. But anyway, you guys, like, you know how expensive property in Cape Town is. Like, you in Cam's Bay. You have properties in Cam's Bay. You've got apartments in Cam's Bay. Like, guys, as like a black person, I can understand if you own a, a house. But entire properties is just like, I, uh, it's not make sure. I, that was just my, like, my thinking at the time. 
and the driver's like okay just be careful send your partner your live location and all of those things be safe because you never know these days um things just happen so at that point in time i share my live location with my partner share it um and so in that like moment he can like sort of like see everything like everywhere where i'm at I share it with him and also i wasn't too worried about that because he has access to my like to my passwords and anything like he can sort of like if he wanted to find me he could find me whether it was via my watch or via my personal phone he could find me but i just thought okay let me just um drop my um what's my live location anyway so the driver drops me at a la parada la paranga whatever um he drops me i get in the restaurant he's not there um because he said he was also at the hotel his hotel in cams bay but he sort of like arrives like five minutes or ten minutes after me and like when i look outside i'm like i will this person is probably like a big shot because everyone like every waiter is sort of like standing at the door you know like when a big shot is coming inside a restaurant and everyone wants to serve that particular person that's how those waiters were acting and also the you guys know like Ila Parada for those of you that have been like in Camps Bay like the restaurants there they only allow people that are going to dine in those restaurants to park there so everyone like the the people that uh what are those people it's not butlers but whatever oh, whatever we'll just call them butlers so those pe those guys were like ah my boss don't 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 like they were talking and vibing with the guy you could tell man but this is a, a big shot up in this restaurant because the way the waiters were were jumpy and also the the butlers um to me it said this person is used to coming to this place is probably a regular because these people are jumping up and down for him and he's like okay no i just need to pick up um a lady over here i can just see about they talking to the person but i don't know but it's the person that i'm waiting for so he calls me and he's like oh i'm actually outside i'm driving this 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 and this car and i'm like uh okay cool um but the ladies um that were talking to him in the car they run to my table because i'm telling you about these ladies they act like the, the waiters they act like this person is a big shot well he is a big shot we've already established that so they come to um the table where i'm sitting at and they're like oh that's the guy and dun, 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 dun. i'm like oh okay cool and i'm talking to him on the phone while the ladies are talking to me so he's like okay um i think we should rather just go and see these properties while well, we can go and view the ones that are in um constantia and we can also view the ones that are here in cams bay but i think it's better if we go to the ones in cams bay sorry we i think it's better he says he thinks it's better if we go and view the ones that are in constantia first and before viewing the ones in cams bay because the time so we'd rather go to constantia and then come back to cams bay because in any case we're going to have um dinner in cams bay so i was like okay cool anyway i'm not that hungry um we we can do that i mean in any case we wanted to talk about property over here so i'm like okay cool we can go um so as i'm going to the car now um i'm sort of like holding my phone like this and i'm taking a video because i'm trying to capture the number plate of the car and send it to my partner so that he knows like the car that i'm eating. Uh, the car that i am driving in because that's what the driver or the uber driver actually said to me but uh also take a picture of the what's this number plate of the car so that you know someone is aware of like the car that you're in the number plate this this and that fine um i take that picture i send it to my partner yeah take the picture send it to my i'm not sure if i sent it hey so you can i don't know so that he thinks that yeah like people know so it's like oh do you like my car like that like do you really like when i like as i enter the car it's like do you like my car like do you really like like my car because i see you're sort of like taking a video and i'm like no i'm taking um 
the a footage of the number plate so that i send it to my partner so that he can keep track of like the car that i am in if should anything happen he starts laughing and he says oh no i understand because um so many things happen like these days you can't trust anyone dun, 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 dun. hey we start talking conversating here um with the guy which is tk i know this guy remember i know this guy as utk we start conversating with tk um he's like do you, oh he was yeah he was talking about his car he's like do you like my car got and i'm like i like your car but like i'm not sort of like shocked uh, mm, because of your car because my man's drives a better car my man's drives uh, a v8 mercedes so i'm not quite like ah oh, over this car but like it's really a nice car it's really a nice car like because it's the latest car the interior as well is great but it's not like i'm not like wowed yeah but so yeah we start a conversation we talk we're vibing you guys like we're really vibing i can't that's why i'm saying but please do not get me wrong but i'm trying to sort of like diffuse this situation i am explaining my interaction with tabo best fine i'm like to him no man when i was speaking to holly i thought i was meeting a white person because um properties in cape town especially in camps bay and constantia girl those houses are owned by um white people okay not by black people so i think Hey, I, I thought him that I was talking to a white person. Uganya Holly was referring to a white person, but when I spoke to you over the phone, you I thought you're a colored person. Now I'm meeting you and I'm seeing an Indian person. Now I'm talking to you and you are now starting to sound like you now can speak vernac. Like what are you honestly? Like honestly, we don't need like we don't because now you can speak my language. Like now you're speaking Kosa because he says my name is a Kosa name. So like what are you? It, like to me, you look a bit ambiguous because I thought you're a white person. I spoke to a colored person. I meet you. I meet an Indian person. I talk to you. I talk to a vernac person. What is this? And he's like, oh no, um, I went to UCT um, here in Cape Town. Um, I forgot what he said he studied, honestly, so I don't remember. Um, yeah, I went to UCT, studied here in UCT. And I mingled with a lot of Kosa people. And I can understand because Eland, yeah, it's in Cape Town. One of the predominant languages that you speak in Cape Town is English and Kosa. So I can understand by why he picked up on the language. And also he says he um sits around a lot of black people so that's the type of people that he usually mingles with and not with like indian people but he is a mixed um indian so i was like oh okay cool now it makes sense fine um so we're driving to constantia you guys um and okay i i have to calculate about how many kilometers is it from camps bay to um uh what's this to Constantia. Let's check it. It says um, from my house to um, Constantia, it is 18 kilometers. So fine. Um, we drive Gengongo to Constantia. In the car, we're vibing, we're talking, like, um, and I didn't even feel like it was an interview, uh, sort of like um, conversation, because even though he was like sort of like trying to interview me. Uh, I didn't feel like that. I just felt like I was speaking to a young person, a vibey person, and like he he was vibing honestly. Vibing, I don't mean like you know, but like the conversation was flowing. Um, so uh, he says to me, "You sound so eloquent," and I tell him, "Oh yes, I went to such and such schools. Um, my dad could afford me and my siblings to go to such 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 schools." So it's like, "Oh okay, what does your dad do?" Um, and I'm like, um, my dad did um, law, uh, my dad did law and he was a prosecutor and now my dad is a prosecutor and at that a control prosecutor here in Cape Town and he's part of the NPA. So he's like, oh, nice job, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So I also tell him, oh, later on, like I was born Gualanga, but yeah, because of the lifestyle change with my dad, um, my dad brought a house in St. Louis City, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So also he tells me about his life. And I'm like, the one question I was interested in was, how did you acquire all of this money? 
that you have so many properties because property is not cheap in Cape Town. So he says, um, okay, I think guys, uh, another thing that I must mention here is that my, my dad passed away in 2021. And the reason why I did not want to talk about my dad in the past is because I hate the pity party. I hate like people making me feel vulnerable. So I think the reason I lied about like my dad being alive at that time was because yeah, I was avoiding the pity party. So I was like, okay, yeah, at least it's a, it's a white lie. And it's not like I'm not going to see this person again. Or even if I do, I don't think we'll revisit this conversation. So anyway, the one question that I was interested in asking him was how did you acquire all of this? like the money that you have and um, acquiring all of these properties because property you guys is not cheap in Cape Town especially in Cams Bay houses a house alone in Cams Bay is about 250,000 USD like honestly houses are not cheap in Cams Bay so I was like I and most of the people that own houses in Cape Town are people that live like in Europe america like all of these international there are some uh, like a few south africans that own houses here in cams bay obviously but like most of them they are investors from international so i wanted to know man, how did he acquire all of the uh, like all of the wealth that he acquired because remember in my mind he owns orem okay so he says his godfather left him money when he passed away so it is e lilifa what's lilifa gonna it's inheritance yeah he got the money from inheritance and um he got about a million usd and you can imagine how much a million usd is in south africa and from there he started like um building his money investing his money in good things and his money grew and he could invest more in like proper luxury um houses so that's how he acquired the money and the godfather is a white person i must mention because his father who yeah his father was friends with it i don't know but yay yeah yeah godfather drive to constantia the one thing though that i found um very weird or awkward when we got to constantia is that um he showed me the houses that he claimed was his but we did not go inside to see the houses like the car was literally in motion when he was showing me these houses he's like oh that is the house that belongs to me and also that one is also one of our properties they are busy working on the houses that i'm showing you both of these houses they are working on them that there's still construction that is going on and obviously i can't dispute about this construction that is happening in the houses because even though i can't see anything happening in the outside i don't know what's happening in the inside so i could dispute it and say i will but there's nothing that's happening in the outside but he could say but there's actual construction that's happening inside the house because outside the house looks proper to me and it looks like a luxury house um yeah they could be constructing the house inside honestly so i i don't know i can't dispute that so i'm like oh okay I'm like oh let's go inside he says i don't know what he says but yeah as he's showing me the houses the car is literally in motion so we didn't even get off of the car we didn't stop nothing like that the car was just going slow yeah the car was going slow so we turned around and we went back to camps bay along the way like we're talking man we're talking about a lot of things we even got to okay before that before this conversation that i'm thinking about uh so he says oh let me call oh let me call holly um let me call holly um because i don't want her to think that i'm fucking you i will i look at him and i'm like what do you mean you're fucking me like what the fuck is that you could really see but i was offended by that statement so he was like oh no i'm so sorry for offending you i didn't mean it that way it's just that it's the language that i use with my friends when we are communicating i forget that um other people it's not the lingo that you guys like other people use so i'm so sorry about that got in got in got in and i'm like cool so from there he starts seeing but my mood is going 
down 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 so he keeps on apologizing and so i'm like okay cool this guy's a cool guy at least he apologized and he saw where he went wrong with the conversation and yeah we carried on with the conversation hey guys we spoke about a lot of things man we spoke about a lot of things he even asked me are you married i'm gonna oh that i have the are you married um what's this conversation uh i took a clip and the clip that i i was taking there i wasn't trying to sort of like record the conversation that i was having with him the clip is a clip of me showing off my nails ne? i think so it's a clip of me showing off my nails i'll show you over here and you'll hear it as well for yourselves um i wasn't trying to record utabo pesta and also i did not think of Utabo Pesta in that way when I met him remember I'm meeting the owner of Orem and when I met him it's not the vibe that I got honestly from him yeah. sometimes in life you have things that are your cup of tea and yeah you some things know. are just like no not really so are you married no I'm I was taking a video of my nails because as I told you I just did my nails uh so yeah um he asked me about now are you married and i'm like oh no i'm not married um he's like uh why are you not married i'm like no i'm in a serious relationship though and we've been together for a while um like we're good together but we're not married yet so i ask him are you married he says um no he was engaged to um his ex fiance they had been together for a long time they met here in south africa but because he met because he had to move to france um the distance wasn't working at least for his fiance uh but the fiance gets along with the fa with his family and he also gets along with the fiance's family like it's a great unit but it's just that it's not working out between the two of them but i'm like but like your situation sounds so good like with your your ex because he also mentions but no we can still like we still meet up from time to time like now that i'm here in south africa we still meet and also i'm like but you also have the means for her like to fly in and out of france i don't see why you guys are like what's the distance because if you have the money and she can travel whenever she wants to travel What's the difference? And you're also in South Africa most of the time. I don't understand. He says, but no, um, his fiance wants him like here in South Africa, like 24 seven. So that's why the relationship didn't work out. I was like, okay, cool. But he also says to me, um, he adopted two girls and um yeah so that's what's currently exciting in his life at the moment. So he adopted two girls. I think the two girls lived with his mother here in South Africa. Oh, hey, I'm not quite sure, man, whether the two girls also lived in France with him, but because he was in South Africa, they were also here in South Africa with them with his mother. Hey, something like that, a story like that. Yeah, he adopted two girls. Hey, uh, yeah, a story like that. We're driving along Camps Begong at this point in time. We are long past the Constantia route. But like we're talking about everything like we're talking because i remember we were also we also passed uh 12 apostles and i was like i love 12 apostles so much like it's also a nice um hotel but it's just that it has sort of like the antique feel like the oldish feel but like it's really a nice a nice um property and he was like yeah we were trying to buy it actually we we're trying to buy um 12 apostles but um the contract failed and also they did the interior at the one and only here in cape town and i was like when did you guys change the interior in um one and only because i was recently in the at the one and only and there's nothing that changed and he's like oh no not the lobby but the rooms and i was like yeah i was there and he's like oh no were you there because this is like something that's quite recent and i'm like oh beginning of the year and it's like yeah that's why because we just fixed them that's why you don't know like about it so apparently they upgraded one and only um the autumn style 
because it was too antique and if you know one and one and only yeah it, it's also ha it also has like the antique type of feel it's not like orem where it's like nice furniture modern furniture modern this everything just screams modern yeah well now we pass Gyeonggu orem at um, in Camps Bay the orem that's there and I take a video I'll also insert that video here for you so that you guys can see the video as well I take the screenshot of the video sorry the uh, a screenshot of sorry not a screenshot man I take a video of Orem and you'd hear on the conversation I'm saying to him but um, this is where I know you guys from like this is where I know Orem from and also I was recently in Johannesburg and I also visited Orem that side so yeah it's really a lovely brand and like honestly everything's modern everything is nice there so we're talking so he's like oh yes um this one is the headquarters like the headquarters this orem is like the headquarters because we had just finished this one and if you're looking at the pictures of the orem here in cape town you'd really see that it's top tier and it has just been um it's a new it's new apartments i don't think it's older than five years so it's really like a new um, property. Okay, so this is where I know you guys from. Yes, this is our brain branding house. <laughs> Everybody knows. Fine, you guys. Um, we're driving around, and uh, so yeah, we decide, but we're not going to La Parada. And he says, um, let's rather go. Oh, when we're passing La Parada, ne? Now we're coming back. Remember, we're coming back from. What's this place? From Constantia. Yeah, we're coming back from Constantia and we're passing La Island, La Paranga, La Parada, whatever. Um, we're passing that place. Now, the butlers, the people, the, okay, the securities that stand there, they see us and Ululando UTK, Tabo Gengoku, Tabo Best. UTK sees like the one of the yeah securities butlers whatever we want to call them they see Ulando Tabo and he starts greeting at them and he's like okay let me take out um a few cash so that I can tip the guy so he calls the guy and he gives him like four or five hundred guys the guy didn't even park did you hear me when I said he just picked me up from um La Parada or La Paranga and we went to what's this place what's his place constantia we came back from constantia and he said let's not do la parada let's rather look for another restaurant but when we were passing there literally we we're not even parked he's like oh hi the yeah the security came and he took the 500 four 500 i'm not quite sure how much it was but i knew i knew about it was a couple of hundred rands fine so i'm like i this guy is really a big shot here and i think one of the mistakes that people make about utabo besta is that Utabo was hiding somewhere. Uganye Utabo was um, sort of like disguising. Uganye, he was staying in some sort of house. He was hiding. Tabo Besta was never hiding. Tabo Besta was like, he, he, guys, when I tell you about, I was literally walking with Utabo Besta in the promenade in Sea Point. Honestly, we were walking. He wasn't even disturbed by people seeing him. He didn't even seem like a person who was afraid of people seeing him. I think there is quite a difference between the Tabo Pesta that was held captive, where that was in jail, from 2012 and now. There's quite a difference. And you guys can see, but now he has long hair. Like, the appearance, Jay, has, like, it has changed. I'm trying to explain, my this guy was never hiding. This guy was not trying to hide. Even the picture that they took from Woolworths. Utabo does not even look shocked. Pagla picture. Why are people taking pictures? <laughs> Guys. That guy was never hiding from anyone. Anyway. Let me explain myself. Fine. Um, so we decide. But we're not going to eat. Obviously at La Parada. Uh, so he says. Let's rather go to the V&A. Are you hearing me? He says. Let's go to the restaurants at the V&A. And I'm like. No, because I, I used to work at the VNA um when I was in university, I sort of like know about when when is it busy at the VNA and also when is it packed. Like I, I know, like I already know about okay, no, certain days are super busy at the VNA, so I don't like going to the VNA on those certain days because it's super packed. I'd rather go when it's like 
quiet and also it was approaching summer and most people were also in restaurants at the Vienna there's so many tourists and all of that so I, I was like nah let's not do the VNA I suggest let's rather go to Sea Point and he's like okay cool which restaurant in Sea Point I tell him the name of the restaurant and he's like um I've never actually been to that restaurant so I'd actually like to taste the food got him got him got him I'm like okay cool now I'm trying to point out to you Utapu Pesta was never afraid of going to places because why if you were afraid of going to places why would you go to a restaurant in Kempsby where people can easily see you and also if I did not reject going to the waterfront I'm telling you we would have went to the uh, to the VNA with Utapu because that's how confident he is like guys that guy was never hiding he was never hiding he was walking freely in South Africa like like no one's business anyway now we're driving to sea point um the restaurant that we're going to obviously the roads are packed and if you also jog at the promenade in sea point you'd know about it is packed around like seven eight o'clock something like that i am not sure but what's the time but i know but it was still in cape town get um in summer it the sun goes like down late so at even nine o'clock it could still look like it's seven o'clock or something like that and there's still light and yeah so he's like okay cool let's go there to see point to this restaurant fine obviously there's a lot of cars parked together we'll go, um along the restaurants there in sea point so we're looking for parking at this point uh we find parking but not close to the restaurant. It's a bit of a walking distance to the restaurant. Fine. We park at this place. Uh, well, at this parking. Hear me. We're walking in the promenade in Sea Point. Do you know how many people walk there? Do you know how many people are in Sea Point? This guy was never scared of anyone. Uh, we get off of the car and we walk to the restaurant. Um. The reason why I'm not mentioning the restaurant is because I also want to get footage of myself walking in the restaurant, uh, yeah, at that restaurant. Like, I want to ask one of the people for the footage, um, of the specific day, and also I think I have specific time, I think it was around 7 or 8 when we got there. Something like that, I'm not quite sure. But I know like the timestamp like honestly I want to see that footage as well so that's why I'm not giving out the name of the restaurant and also timestamp so fine um, we go inside the restaurant uh, we walk so walking in the promenade guys in front of everyone we're walking and yeah people uh, yay anyway we walk in the restaurant and um, we get a table but I asked the lady for a table where everyone sits but obviously because we got there around about I think seven, 7 or 8 I'm not sure I, I don't know honestly I think got there late and it was like already fully like booked and also it's quite hot so I wanted a seating that is outside so we couldn't get a table that side so the guy suggests okay get, um rather take a table that is deep within inside yeah we get a table that is inside and we are seated at this table um yeah we sit at this table um now remember when i said i used to be a hostess when i was still in varsity at the at the vna waterfront like when i was still in varsity i used to work at the vna as a hostess at a high class or high level restaurants where politicians celebrities don't don't used to go there yeah so my boss that owned oh my boss that owns those restaurant in sea point also owns this restaurant sorry my boss that owned those restaurants in waterfront also owns the restaurant that is here in sea point the restaurant that we are in fine and this particular boss of mine an ex-boss of mine um we don't get along we've never gotten along like as van like uh, as van we've, ne we've never gotten along like we're like water and oil we don't mix together we're sitting at this table this is what i think made utabo besta uncomfortable at this point in time so as we're sitting to at as we're sitting at this table um the boss 
that I'm telling you about he was he is the boss of the um, V&A waterfront restaurants that I used to work for he's also the boss here he was there that day so he was there at that restaurant now because this guy like he always wants me to greet he never wants to greet yeah he always wants that like and I've never like been a person to greet him I just look at him so he, I'm not sure if he wanted a greeting from me from me or he wanted to make sure but it was me I'm not quite sure so I think Utabo Pesa started feeling okay so what this boss of ex boss of mine used to I'm gonna call him boss because hey yeah with this ex boss ex boss of mine was doing is that he would look at my table because he was trying to identify if the person who was sitting at the table is it me and also if he's not looking at my table he would like sort of like walk around my table so that he may i don't know what that guy was doing honestly like as fun guys we've never gotten along so he was trying to make sure but i see him so that i greet him or can i acknowledge him or something i don't know what it was but yeah he was like sort of like looking at our table paying attention to our table and that's what i think made utabo besta scared um yeah that's what i think made him scared but he thought that the guy was actually looking at him and not at me he didn't think that the the ex-boss was looking at me so yeah i think those are one of the things that saved me so when he realized that well, this guy keeps on looking at this table and this guy keeps on coming to this table he thought that the ex-boss is actually looking at him he didn't think that the ex-boss is looking at me so i think that's how i got saved i don't know i correct me if i'm wrong and also i think the mere fact that i mentioned that my father is a control prosecutor in cape town and i also did not talk about my dad in the past tense i actually spoke about him in the present tense it was really smart of me that day because i'm thinking wow he probably thought if he did something to me it w it's going to be a big thing so yeah i think hey because the my father part i told him when we we're on our way to constantia i don't know you guys i honestly don't know Ugani, he was trying to buy time hey i don't know but all i know is that my guardian angels my ancestors were literally with me that day they were literally with me he says to me okay um uh i'm gonna leave now like he acts like he's talking on the phone like he's chatting on the phone he says he's going to leave um uh yeah he has something to attend like right now but i had already noticed but this boss was looking here i did not know at the time that he is utabo pesta so i was not thinking but he was thinking that the boss is looking at him but now i can understand why he left the restaurant because he left as we were ordering the food and he was like um should i pay and i'm like oh no it's fine man i'll cover it it's fine it's okay so he left to go to his car and i call him and i tell him oh i actually left my sunglasses um in your car could you please bring it for me okay could you wait for me so that i take my sunglasses and he's like oh no man you can even get them tomorrow gotcha gotcha we can meet up tomorrow i'm like ah oh, no it's fine let me take my sunglasses now because how do i know that i'll meet up with you tomorrow so i'm like okay cool no it's fine i'll come and take them and he's like no it's fine i'll bring them to you so he walks again to the car walks back to me just trying to show you this guy was never hiding Utabo, he didn't even have a cap on he had his hair he was looking fresh and yeah that was it so he came brought my sunglasses and he left my boss my ex-boss still kept on doing the same thing even after he left even when i was having dinner even when i was finishing dinner like he came to my the people that were sitting next to me he spoke to them but he was like hey yeah i think that also helped me that day uh so yeah that's how i met utabo besta and guys i won't lie i did not feel threatened i did not feel under any harm the only statement that sort of like got me feeling um unease is the statement of fucking um and also shame he apologized for it so 
yeah yeah that was it with the meeting of a type of Bethesda. so yeah that's how we spend a lot of a couple of hours together oh guys i also realized that i left out some very important parts of um the story so while we were on the way to what's this place to constantia he was explaining what we like um the job my job would be here in this um in this special of his so he told me about um this was like a netflix special and that we're going to review um properties um which happen to be overseas some of them are overseas and um some of them are here in south africa but mostly we'll be traveling um internationally stay in these houses for like a month or like for like two weeks or something like that and after um we've sort of like uh stayed for like two weeks they'll do we'll do a review of the house how do we feel about the house and how does it feel about li how do you feel about living lax like so many um brand sponsored sponsors he mentioned coca-cola mentioned a couple of makeup brands like luxury makeup brands dior was also part of it uh, i'm not quite sure uh, i remember dior specifically coca-cola and dior i remember them because dior is one of my favorite brands coca-cola it's a uh, yeah cool drink one of my favorite cool drinks as well so that's why i remember them so they were going to be one of the sponsors he mentioned quite a few sponsors that were that were going to sponsor the show um so it's like why do you not like seem excited about this opportunity this this and that uh and i'm like um where did you guys advertise this thing because i did not see any like advert about this thing so he says i don't know i don't remember the answer he gave me about where they advertised um this netflix special thing um apparently there was one in dubai the casting happened in dubai others happened in europe so there's a couple of girls also that are international and a couple of influencers that are from here in south africa that they've also interviewed gotten gotten so it was sort of like a luxurious type of thing like netflix special um reason why they contacted me between august and september is because they wanted to cast me then but because i couldn't make it um they just thought okay we'll keep her like we'll wait until you are available here this this and that so yeah so i was asking about why don't you seem like excited about this opportunity and the reason i was feeling the reason i wasn't excited was because remember i am expecting right and Utabo Pesta does TK at least does not know that I'm expecting because to him I don't have a stomach I'm not showing but in my mind I know about I'm expecting so I'm asking I ask him um what do I ask him when is this gonna premiere and he says but it's gonna premiere probably in uh in February now I'm thinking my god now I'm already like a couple of months down the line chances are when this thing starts um when we start filming this thing i will be showing and i don't think that's something that they're looking for they are possibly looking for a person that was the weight that i was before i was pregnant okay before i was showing that i'm pregnant and they're not looking for someone that is pregnant so that's why i wasn't quite excited in my mind i thought okay cool um and they were willing to pay so much money another thing that you need to know about utabo okay tk is that he is willing you guys like he's willing to take out money um even the the companies because the media company that uh, he owned in johannesburg those people were saying like they were getting paid good money and they were being paid on a monthly basis there was never any struggle when it came to money it seemed like money was a always available um i also did my own research like this guy had no problem with money i think the pay that he promised i'm not quite sure man i don't remember properly but it was between anything between i think it was 60 was it 70,000 70 to 100,000 per month so you think you're really thinking this is a good opportunity like honestly it's a good opportunity also you're internet you're overseas chances are you won't even use this money because um they'll be sponsoring everything they'll be sponsoring outfit sponsoring hair sponsoring everything you're just living joanna the only time that 
you will probably spend this money is when you come back to South Africa. So he was explaining it as if it's a great opportunity. Now in my mind, I am also sold, but at the same time, I'm thinking this girl will be heavily pregnant in February. So, well not heavily, but I'll be showing. So chances are, um, they are not looking for a person like that, okay? They are looking for a certain aesthetic so yeah we kept on conversating about that and it's like no i don't know why i'm not getting the vibe that i'm supposed to get from you with regards to this opportunity because other girls are super excited and you are not even sure about us costing you and i'm like no i'll get back to you i'll talk to you like we'll talk uh yada 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 i promised but i'll talk to him like we'll talk because it seems like quite a good opportunity and he's like please get back to me as soon as possible like when you have a decision before i also um go abroad um so that i make sure that you also cast it because i like you he 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 so on and so on and so on so i'm not sure again about that was sort of like trying to make me feel comfortable so that we can meet the next time and uh, you, I don't know guys, I don't know what was the motive, but I'm just explaining how I met Tabo Besta and the conversation that we had. Um, and yeah, you guys will hear for, for yourselves like the voice. I, as I mentioned, I will make sure that I don't show any numbers. I'd also like to know though, but was TK working with Ooh, Nandipa? Nandipa, I honestly want to know because I was contacted by Holly remember is a South African number and um, TK is an is an international number um, so now I'm not quite sure if I was talking to Nandipa and Utabo which is TK or I was talking to TK TK at the same time like he had two numbers that's also possible if anyone was also invited to that Netflix special um, Kanye sort of like introduced to that Netflix special and you have so, some sort of knowledge about what's Nandipa's number or Kanye you know specifically that you're talking to Nandipa I don't know how you'd know but if you know please DM me and show me the number I'll also share the number that I have on my side I just want to make sure but was Unandipa also recruiting girls for Utabo I, I, I just want to make sure, I don't know why, but honestly, I also just want to make sure about was she also trying to recruit girls for Utabo and also, what was the purpose, man, like, it was teeny purpose, yeah, 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 you don't get it. Anyway, you guys, um, I realized, honestly, I could have been one of the girls that were orfed, were murdered, and all of those things, and um, I highly think that they should be punished for all that they've done, and the part where i also don't and okay should i finish this thing ah the part also that i don't understand people suddenly after that voice note to Kanye, that conversation between tk and orlando oh, tk utabo besta and nandipa suddenly when that voice note surfaced the one where unandipa is acting like the victim or Kanye, to me that thing sounds staged honestly that is what they want to go with in court to me honestly it sounds staged and also why is it so convenient for unandipa to uga yeah for unandipa to make this thing go viral now now that they have been captured why didn't they make this thing um go viral before why why are they only doing why is it so convenient also you are the same person that collected three bodies from mortuaries and claiming it is your father your brother and your dun dun and your husband's body but you knew exactly what you were doing that for you're also the same person who assisted him to get out of prison allegedly and now you're claiming to be the victim how can you take someone out of prison and still be the victim why did you not tell anyone in the inside that this person is threatening you if really you want if really you were under um you were being threatened for your life or you were a victim why would you help him escape if anything i think i would look for someone <clears throat> that's going to keep him there so it doesn't make sense to me that a person who is in prison you're trying to help them come out so that they don't victimize you because when they're out i think i would think that 
you would become more of a victim and they would abuse you a bit more i don't get it like it doesn't connect to me this thing of a uh, hi i'm sorry Nandipa, you'd need to come up with so like with more information now nah, i'm not one to be easily persuaded by nonsense so please come out with proper things so that we can listen to your story and uh we can see what we think now nah, i'm not i'm really not i'm one hot cookie to crack so um that thing that just came out i think you are just making sure that um the courts or okay, your lawyer goes with that and runs with that apparently he's also she's also insane you didn't know that you were insane all along you were only just finding that out now <sighs> allegedly apparently yeah ne? I, it's not make sure Nagumi does not make sense maybe to you it does but to me I'm just like until you give us proper proof because I do not understand how you take someone out of prison take out so many bodies to help this person uh, allegedly 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 uh, I don't understand but the the one that he, she took bodies it's confirmed now like it's confirmed the one that we are not so sure about is the one that she helped Utabo take out the bodies like there's still like no no proper like proof so for that one allegedly but for the bodies go to Anguasis so I it's not make sure guys I, I don't know anyway that is it for the story after Utabo went and I stay at the stayed at the restaurant the next conversation oh before he left um for uh, before he left the restaurant we had discussed that we i can use we had discussed that i can use um the hotels the houses and whatever properties um that are here in cape town for content creation we agreed on that and that was it that was fine um and he said i should contact um holly because holly is the one that is in control of those properties and she's the one that's controlling the properties that are here in south africa so i should contact her for whatever houses that are available gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. so i was like oh coolio at least i'm getting what i want even though i'm not sure about the netflix thing because i am pregnant i think that's one of the things that um turned utabo off let me complete whatsapp messages yeah, let me read the WhatsApp messages to you. Let's go, TK. Okay, let's start with Holly because I sent her a message first. Okay, so I say to um, to Holly, Hi Holly, hope you're well. Thank you for connecting me with TK. He said I, can, I should let you know that I can use your properties for content creation purposes. You can also confirm with him. Um, I'm hoping to create content i'm hoping to create content next monday or tuesday please let me know which property you have available remember they have a lot of properties and i'm not quite sure about which properties are available so i sent Ohali this message on the 27th of october and holly and i met on the 25th of october this is after i came back home and i told my man about the opportunity but i was like i am not quite sure because i am carrying so i think when this thing comes out Ganya, when it premieres um i'll probably be showing and i'm not sure if that's what they want to me it seems like they want a certain aesthetic and anyone like it's logical yeah so holly does not respond to me um on the 3rd of november i say to holly um hi holly i'm just following up she does not respond um she just reads the message and her and her last scene here on whatsapp it says um it was the 18th of december 2022 so this is when uh at least we know about oh, how was online let me just check uh tk conversation between me and tk uh okay so i have another conversation with tk gungoku uh, which was Tabo Besta. Um, I say on the 3rd of November. I say hi TK. Hope you well. It's Zienda. It was great meeting you the other day when I asked when I asked you when the show will will air. When I asked you when the show will air, you said in February. I'm expecting a baby, and um, as much as I would love to be part of this show in f uh in sh of this show, yes. Um, in February I will be heavily pregnant. I'm not sure if that's something you guys are fine with, 
but do let me know so i'm stating what i just told you guys oh but um yeah that was my fear he did not respond he read it though did not respond so i'm guessing that's when i became a turn off um i say okay ha and again i send him a message and i say hi tk hope you're good i spoke to holly she's not responding to my messages with regards to the te to the content creation um in your properties do not respond he just um read the message and yeah that is it you guys that's how i met tabo pesta that's how i spent a couple of hours with him in his car um yeah for those of you that know cape town Oganya, the distance between um camps bay to constantia you guys would know there's so many mountains over there there's so many trees and bushes where someone could easily take you out of his car rape you kill you gotin gotin all of that so honestly for me i'm just thanking my guardian angels because i understand now and i can see now that what had happened to other ladies could have easily happened to me could have easily happened to me honestly so yeah i just wanted to tell you guys my story and how i met tabo pesta how yeah i hope um you don't think that i sort of like diluted the situation okay um yeah i hope so i'm just telling you my story here and how i met him and yeah just telling you my story so thank you so much for tuning in you guys let me know what you think about the story this time i saw the picture that was trending on twitter i'm not on twitter but i saw it on some blog um the first time i saw it i was like i know this person but the picture that was shared by the blog is not the one with dr nandipa and um tabo together the picture that they showed on the blog was the picture when Utabo was first held captive um, which was around 20, 2012 something like that Oganya when he was in prison and then he didn't have hair um, he looked young like he looked like like he didn't have hair you could easily mistaken him for one of us black people but also thinking he's mixed but there's no hair like something that so yeah. so when i saw that picture i was like i know this person but i don't know where i know them from but i know them but i don't know where i know where i know them from and then the second picture which came out which was now utabo besta and um dr nandipa um that's where i was like i know this guy like honestly i know this guy that's when i was like to my partner babe I think this is the guy I was sitting with in the car and he's like no it can't be I'm like yeah I think this is the guy he's like no it can't be um and I'm like but they're saying his name is Tabo Pesta I don't know of any Tabo Pesta I know his name as TK so I was like probably I'm the wrong one here until I watched Ulelo's podcast I'm sure you guys know Lelo Lelo is a YouTuber I'm, I'm not sure what's the the YouTube handle forgot but it's Lelo something. Yeah, Lelo something, podcast something. Until I listened to one of her stories where she confirmed that there was an influencer who was um, meant to be flown by Tabo from Durban to Cape Town for a casting for a Netflix show. And Utabo presented himself as TK. That's when I knew spot on, this is the guy. So that's how I found out. But that is the guy. She confirmed um that to me and that that was when i was like certainly this is the guy so yeah 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 the story is still developing you guys i also want to see how it's gonna go uh yeah i'm hoping i can find the footage um at the restaurant yeah if i can then i'll yeah i'll, I'll speak to some people there at that restaurant and i'm um, yeah i want the footage honestly I don't know but i want the footage don't know why but i want it anyway you guys thank you so much for tuning in uh yeah this is not a enjoyable video honestly i realized but i almost died i almost was in a situation where anything could have happened i don't know my guardian angels my my people were with me that day and i appreciate that so much 
my pregnancy also it saved me from a lot of things because had i not said to him that i'm expecting a baby chances are we would meet up again and he would try to gain my trust and maybe i would also trust him because this is the second time i'm meeting this person perhaps we would meet in johannesburg now he would arrange an apartment for me he would arrange a b c d e f g for me and that's how he could have gotten access to me you know so yo guys i'm thankful jesus you are so big yo i praise a living god honestly uh, that's what i'm appreciative of the mere fact that i pray like every day and at any time of the day i am happy that god hears my prayers and my ancestors hear my prayers and like they protect me from whatever nonsense that is going on around me that i can't see um they protect me so yeah very grateful very grateful for life for the gift of life and yeah i just hope ululando tabo best that gets what he deserves and also dr nandi pa makudumana also um gets what she deserves because i don't believe even for one minute that she is insane as she is trying to plead and also that she was some sort of victim because to me going to take three bodies also involving your father in this mix and you going to assist this person to be released in prison you are going to claim that this person is dead to me that thing does not scream victim honestly allegedly but to me does not scream victim i don't care what you say until we see any further information uh yeah maybe i'll change my mind then but for me now i'm not convinced i'm sorry um yeah thank you so much for tuning in you guys please don't forget to like comment and also subscribe also please don't forget to click the notification bell to be notified of future uploads i noticed that this video is one of the longest videos that's because i needed to explain myself in detail so that you guys can understand but yeah this is it bye peace